presents you don't want, inviting fire hazards into your home, awkward political arguments with your uncle, and of course, pledging your immortal soul to Cthulhu. These are the elements of a fulfilling holiday season, because today in RimWorld, we're going to be embracing our inner Kris Kringle and forming a cult to our Dark Lord, our friend Cthulhu. I'm the Grim Cleaper, and I hope you're having a wonderful day, but much like the Salvation Army, I'm going to pester you once again to subscribe to the channel, for the simple reason that I like seeing this number get bigger. That's, that's pretty much it, you can just click the button. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the holiday spirit. And what better way to do it than with our Gestalt Cult of the Old Ones. As you can see, our colonists are not exactly selfless, although they do have an interesting shared mood aspect. We have a couple of pretty normal rituals, and uh, th this, I didn't actually change this. This is just what it randomed into, and I'm gonna keep it. We've got Krampus, the man who is too smart and has bloodlust. We've got Santa, who's incapable of violence and kind, while also having extreme PTSD. And lastly, the guy who delivers all your gifts. Jeff Bezos. And just like that, we are in. Did I forget to mention that we have a, a very special guest, a good old Dark Young, which is some kind of ancient eldritch monster. I don't really know the details. But for this Christmas, it's going to be our Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. The biome that we're starting in is a boreal forest, which is extremely cold, and it's only going to get worse. But our goal here for this run is actually to summon Cthulhu. And yes, we do have a mod that lets us do that. You know, these Santa hats we're wearing are pretty overpowered. We get a plus two mood because they're uh, according to our beliefs, and then a plus three mood, I'm feeling Christmas vibes. And aha, looks like we got this event eventually, and it's uh, from Jeff Bezos, of course. Now with the Cthulhu mod that we have on, an eerie tree will spawn at some point early in the colony. A colonist will then investigate it, and well, you'll see what happens next. And there it is, Jeff Bezos has begun to obsessively write pages of strange symbols. It also gives this uh, very interesting mood debuff. Uh, I don't know what number that is, and I don't know if I want to. But after Jeff is done, we get a Grimoire. This Grimoire we can use to build a cult research station. And as you can see, this is what begins our cult. If we check our research, we'll see this whole tab right here under Occult Research. Essentially, all of these research trees just lead to different things that further our knowledge of Cthulhu and other eldritch beings. And slowly, we can work our way up to more powerful alternatives. Oh, and it looks like we've actually founded our cult. Thanks, Jeff, for wanting to uh, name it. There we go, the perfect name. Arctic Coyote Revenge. I think, uh, I think it's already gone. Oh, Jesus, Jeff. Happened because of sanity loss severe. Oh, right. So another mechanic in the game is that as our colonists research, they slowly go insane. Jeff here has the following modifiers because he is completely and utterly crazy. The downside is that we are virtually guaranteed to have a mental break, meaning that we have to balance our dark desires with the fact that our colonists will go completely insane if we keep looking into them. Also, we just got some dark young sap? Is that something that you really want to consume? Sweet sap squeezed from an orifice. That's not going to get me demonetized, is it? Oh, hey. We just got a random cultist to join. His name is Trobert. And uh, surprise, surprise. He is a mad surgeon and a psychopath. Given that he joined our colony, I guess that's not a surprise. Ooh, a space battle. That could be pretty good, given that usually there are survivors, AE potential sacrifices. During research, Jeff has begun uttering unnatural sounds instead of speech. Okay, Jeff, we can, we can knock you off of the research for right now, my man. The crazy insect lady has decided to join our colony, which is pretty cool. Oh shoot, our first raid. Tropert is actually the only one here with a weapon, which is kind of bad. But uh, there's also like five of us and one of him, so that does make things significantly easier. Santa's just here for moral support, I think. Oh, Natsuki joined as well. Our colony is already six people and we've only been here for a couple of days. So something that you can do to clear up sanity loss is you can uh, right click on your colonists to make them go mad. Now I just did that on Jeff and uh, the results were not great. In that vein, uh, we are now going to beat him into submission until he decides that he made the wrong decision. I'm a little confused. So I keep rescuing Jeff, right? I put him in his bed and then a couple seconds later he gets up 
stands at this bench, and then immediately downs himself from sanity loss. I mean, I guess it is literally the definition of insanity. So at this point, we've gotten the basic research down for our cult tree, which is just going to allow us to build some of the structures that we need to continue. But now we have to probe the occult deities because we haven't officially discovered Cthulhu yet. And we've gotten the first of many, Dagon, who's basically just this giant fish. But he is not Cthulhu, so we don't care. Oh, and actually on the second try, we got Cthulhu, which is fantastic because that means we can actually start worshiping him. Now, the first step for our cult is to get up this wooden altar right here. After just clicking a button twice, we've upgraded the altar to the max level because we have the research for it. And now we can start to worship. So now we just have to figure out our ritual schedule. And, you know, it's, let's be easy on the people. Worship every day. There, just a, a sermon every day. Nothing too bad. It's like church, except, you know, every day with a different god. And you'll be shot if you don't go. Oh, we got a Molder Goods Trader from the Skaven. And already one of them is being killed by an Arctic Coyote. That's, that's great. Now, this is a little bit of a fun and interesting exploit you can do with traders. But if I go into the trader, you'll notice that this guy is only $122. That is extremely cheap. But why is that? Well, it's actually because that colonist is this guy. Because RimWorld calculates the value of a colonist based on how they are immediately, this person is only worth $150. And his traits are actually pretty good because he has Fast Learner. This colonist, on the other hand, with no injuries, is worth almost a thousand dollars meaning that just because this guy was attacked by a wolf his price went down by about a fifth okay we bought two colonists and we're just barely gonna save scrutch over here although not for long considering i don't really have any intention of keeping him as a colonist jeff has suffered a total mental breakdown the final straw was tense who would have guessed that jeff heading his own cult would be more stressful than being ceo of amazon so Santa was fighting off a disease, right? And, uh, this just happened. The time he spent was enough for self-reflection. He was taught that eating human meat is wrong and horrible, but one time long ago he tried it and liked it. Oh god, wait, what's Santa's sack gonna be made out of? And Crutch is, uh, now gonna run wild. That's great. Oh, I actually, I don't think I can blame him. Insulted times 10 minus 46 mood. Apparently being freed from slavery just wasn't enough for him. Uh, wait. Skaven revenge- oh. Oh. Well, Rudolph took care of that problem. Not exactly in the way I thought he would, but okay. I was going to capture him and sacrifice him to Cthulhu, but I guess that works. Uh, I just noticed a uh, tentacle lover role unfilled. I wasn't aware that Cthulhu was the leading role for every single hentai ever. Now, one of the unique mechanics behind cults is that you have a standing with each of the eldritch gods. For example, right now, Cthulhu is ignoring us. Notice me, daddy Cthulhu. Now, the more we have sermons and gather to worship Cthulhu, you'll notice that our standing will slowly go up. Every time we reach a new level, we unlock new abilities to use with Cthulhu. Those abilities, of course, have a uh, very special price. Okay, nice. So at this point, our senpai has noticed us, which actually gives us the ability to start using sacrifices in order to please him and cast spells. And uh, unfortunately, first up on the chopping block is uh, our good friend Screech. And the spell that we're going to cast is called Orbital Insanity Wave, which actually just crashes trade ships in the region. Yeah, it's pretty good. And with our sacrifice comes a mixed success. Either way, we've uh, crashed a bolt goods trader over here and gotten a decent amount of gear. Now, bolt goods traders are probably one of the worst crash ships you can get, but they're still okay. And as you probably noticed by this point, the amount of loot that you get is not everything in the ship. But the best ships to crash are exotic goods traders and combat suppliers and basically for free also this boulder is giving me ptsd of our ancients playthrough oh dear god so we got some uh, travelers here wishing for aid and that gives me a pretty good idea now all of them are decent characters enough but uh, we don't really need them to be good oh and a second one actually got down oh that's even better now a while ago we were fighting those caribous that rudolph aggroed and trobert here lost his left arm you see, the big man has actually thought of that, and we have an ability called Aspect of Cthulhu. 
This basically re-manifests one of our colonist limbs as a tentacle. As soon as we're done sacrificing the we have a success. And as you can see, I have a little target icon here. If I go over to Trobert and I click him, boom. Now it says his arm has been replaced with a Cthuloid tentacle. Oh, baby. Now, a Cthuloid tentacle gives manipulation plus 25% and 125% efficiency. Basically, it's really strong. For reference, that's actually better than a bionic arm and almost as good as an Arcotech arm. Another little facet of this mod is that each of the deities have their own clothing. In my opinion, Cthulhu's clothing is by far the coolest and you'll see exactly why. And there we go, our Preacher. Definitely one of the more frightening characters I've ever seen in RimWorld. Now by this point, we're actually watched by Cthulhu, so we gain access to another ability called Psionic Growth. And we'll just speed through the ritual, and boom, you'll notice that Trobert got an infection. A head infection? Well, how does that make any sense? Well, you see, this head infection comes along with a Psionic Lobe. This Psionic Lobe gives us a plus 20% consciousness really good, right? Well, it also gives us access to three unique abilities. You can pause the video to look at what these abilities do, but we have Psionic Blast, Psionic Shock, and Psionic Burn. Oh, a transport pod crash? Step right up, we're about to use you to crash a trade ship. And just like that, we got a mixed success, meaning that we got an eclipse, but coupled with a combat supplier crash landing. Ho ho ho, I will take that. While this isn't exactly the best or most amazing haul, we do get an HMG and what is basically marine armor. Oh, we got some thrombos. Now I am wondering if we could actually take them. Now I guess we can use these uh, psychic blasts to push the thrombo back just, just a little. Look at that. And, oh man, feels... Oh wait, shit, it's actually resetting our, uh, our attacks. Psychic shock? Uh, uh. Wait, on a critical success, the shock causes the head of the target to explode. Oh, I should have read my own ability. Well, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna thank Cthulhu for that one. Santa's got food poisoning from human meat. Now we did get the deserter quest a while ago, and I think I am going to accept it, which is moderately frightening, but I think we're gonna be okay just barely. Oh, we actually downed one of these guys, which is fantastic, because we can strip them for all their flak gear. Oh, uh, Appa got a disease. Not like that's gonna matter. Because something that I've always wanted to test out, and what we're going to test out right now, is that this aspect of Cthulhu, I believe you can actually put this on animals too. And uh, let, let's see if we can actually use this on Rupert. Uh, no. No, we actually can't. Rudolph is, uh, I guess he's already a little too tentacly for, uh, for Cthulhu. What we can do is give one to Santa, actually. Because, uh, Santa lost his eye originally, but now he has a Efficiency 125 Sight Plus 15% high stock. Oh shoot, a mechadon cluster. That is kind of a scary one. Wait, it, it's just turrets. Okay, I mean, as long as it's just turrets, I don't think I really care about it. Oh shit, a shuttle crash. <laughs> oh hey. Wait, oh my gosh, they're they're both our religion. And they're actually pretty good as well. We'll just go ahead and rescue them and uh, hopefully they join. If they don't, it's, you know, not really a big deal. Oh, and one of them joined. Fantastic. And uh, well, it looks like Lux made the, uh, the wrong decision. I'm sorry to hear that. And congratulations. Thank you for your donation. Nation. Ho, ho, ho! It really is Christmas! Prestige trooper armor, a carbine, 12 advanced components? That just doesn't feel like it should be legal. So I accidentally clicked on uh, Begin Yeetus Deletus, ignore the name, uh, and auto defaults to Sacrifice Rudolph. It doesn't fit in the porthole. This looks like when it says sacrifice, it means who are you gonna sacrifice to? Oh, Okay, I made a slight mistake. I uh, did one too many of these corruption rituals and uh, one of our colonists went completely insane. Of course, uh, luckily for us, he decided to do that in probably the worst location he could have. Oh, that's wholesome. Our uh, our giant tentacle beast is actually what's rescuing him. Oh my God, he <laughs> it looks like he's just gonna eat him. <laughs> That does not look like a rescue. Okay, so so we got a raid. Uh, and this is probably one of the worst ones. Uh, there's about 22 people here and only eight of us. 
Okay, yeah, and on that note, I think we should probably get inside. Let's, let's go, let's go. And it is time to pray that they don't break through our uh, line of defense, which is just a giant, giant angry beast. What is actually making this pretty good for us is that we've downed like a bunch of people, which means straight into the fodder. And awesome. It looks like they are uh, actually starting to flee now, which is good. Now, uh, let's just capture everybody, throw them into this, uh... I mean, there's lots of weapons in here, but I'm just gonna pray they don't rebel. Either way, we're gonna sacrifice them almost immediately. Uh, oh, and now this has been followed up by a... What are you? I... I thought our monsters were scary. Those things are awful. Yeah, I, I think we're gonna do the old, uh, you know, hide inside before they eat us strategy. Oh my god, come on. This is gonna be so close. They're right on top of us. Come on. <laughs> oh my god, I... I don't- I do not want to mess with these creatures. Age 364! And, uh, as we approach Christmas, it only seems functional that we have a gigantic mechanoid cluster that lands, eh, you know, just over here. But that, my friends, is for another time. Because now is the time of celebration. cthulhu -mas has arrived. Gathered together with friends, family, and other, we deserve to sit back and say, Thank God the year's almost over. I hope everyone has a great holiday season, and if this video gets 2,000 likes, I'll finish this playthrough and summon Cthulhu or die trying. I hope you have a great rest of your holiday, and I'll see you later.